Hi everyone, I'm Mike and welcome back to another Common Tennis video. So today what we're going to be talking about is the different head sizes of tennis rackets and why more pros are using larger head sizes than what we saw in the 90s and the early 2000s. There are three types of head sizes that we can categorize all tennis rackets into. The first category is mid-sized tennis rackets and that's anywhere from 85 square inches all the way to 96 square inches. Then the next category up are called mid-plus rackets and this is what we see commonly these days. Those rackets are anywhere from 97 square inches all the way to 105 square inches. And then finally there's the last category which is a little bit rare and that is the oversized rackets. The oversized rackets are going to be anywhere above 105 square inches. Now this video is going to focus mainly on mid-sized rackets and mid-plus rackets because those rackets are the most common that we're going to see out on court and on the pro tour. This video is inspired through some of the communication I had with people on my Instagram account. Some people were asking me about tips about choosing a racket based on the head size. And so I decided to make this video to kind of answer some of those questions and hopefully help people out if they're looking for a racket to buy so they know what they're looking for in terms of head size and what they're going to get based on what they buy. I even conducted an Instagram poll to see what most people are using and the results are right here. So as you can see, most people are using rackets that are above 95 square inches. So that's putting them into that mid plus category. And we can see that that's also happening on the pro tour. So for example, I'm going to talk about the big three, which is Djokovic, Federer and Nadal. Djokovic uses a tennis racket sized 95 square inches. Nadal uses a racket that's bigger, 100 square inches, and Federer actually switched from using a 90 square inch racket to a 97 square inch racket, and he made that change in 2014. And so even Djokovic, who's still using a mid-size racket, is actually on the closer end to a mid-plus size, since his is a 95, it's kind of right on that borderline. If we look back in tennis history though, if we looked at the 90s and the early 2000s, it was actually way more common to see rackets in that mid-size range than it would be to see them in the mid plus whereas now it's completely opposite where most players are using mid plus size rackets and i even have a couple examples of some different head sizes just so you can see how they compare to each other so this racket here was released in 2007 when the smaller head sizes were still more popular and this is the k-blade tour and this head size here is a 93 square inch then moving on, we have the head size that Djokovic is currently using and it's actually now considered one of the smaller head sizes. This V-Core is a 95 square inch head size. And then finally, this is the more common uh, type of racket which would be categorized in the mid plus and this Speed Pro from Head is 100 square inches. So this is now the more common typical thing that you'd see. One of the things I thought would be important to share with you guys is to start to understand why is this change happening from the smaller head sizes to the bigger ones and why are more people using mid plus size rackets and to understand what's going on we need to know three things that are affected by the head size so the first thing is maneuverability the second thing is control and the last thing is power so just to start off with maneuverability when you have a smaller head size racket like this one that's a 93 square inch it just makes it a lot easier to handle and maneuver of course that's in the name maneuverability so you can easily move it from side to side it's a lot easier to control the movement of the racket in your hands whereas a bigger head size like this you're losing some of that maneuverability and control of the actual movement of the racket in your hands the next thing that's going to be affected by head size is power so if i were to take these two rackets so here's how we can think of how power is affected through head size if i take these two examples of a of a mid-size racket and a mid-plus, you gotta think of the strings here as a trampoline. So if we're thinking about this area here, which is a string bed, you gotta think of it as a trampoline. So the bigger the trampoline, the bigger the bounce you're gonna get. And the smaller the trampoline, the smaller the bounce. But what's also happening is there's an effect with the control there. Because when you're getting that bigger bounce, the landing you're gonna have off of that trampoline is gonna be harder to control. So placing the ball and controlling where the ball is gonna go is gonna be harder off of this bigger uh, head size. Whereas if I'm going to this smaller trampoline or smaller head size, then what's happening is uh, there's less power, but I'm more easily able to control where that ball is gonna be landing. So I'm getting a lot better control with a smaller frame, whereas the boost in power is gonna be the benefit of the bigger frame. 
So one of the questions you guys might have is why don't all players just have a massive head size since it's more powerful? Well, the answer is for most pro players, a racket somewhere between 95 and 98 to 100 sometimes square inches is gonna be a perfect range for them. They don't need an extremely big head size because they're able to create the power and control themselves. So they're usually phys very physically fit and they have very good swing mechanics. So the power is not a problem for them. So that's why you see people like Djokovic still using a 95 square inch and not moving up to a higher one from that. And even why Federer used a 90 square inch racket for so long is because he was able to produce his own power very well because his swing mechanics were perfect. However, there's one big factor that is pushing players to move more towards uh, bigger head sizes. And that is because like we talked about earlier with the bigger trampoline and the string bed, that bigger string bed also allows for more spin potential from the rackets. So what that means is since the ball is gonna be in the center of the string and you're brushing upwards to create top spin, there's more space for you to be brushing across on a larger head size, which means that the potential for spin is gonna be a lot bigger on a larger head size. The reason why we're seeing more players using larger head sizes these days is because the whole game of tennis has changed. Where back in the 90s and early 2000s, these smaller head sizes were more popular because players tended to have a more aggressive style of games, kind of similar to what Roger does, where they're attacking aggressively on their shots and moving in to finish at net. And that's where having that control and the smaller head size for the maneuverability at the net is gonna play a huge role in making it a lot more suited to that style of gameplay. What we're seeing these days though is a game that favors these bigger head sizes. We're seeing players needing more power because they're hitting from further back in the court, right? They're not stepping in like Roger Federer hitting at the baseline or inside it. Most players are staying behind the baseline, playing a more defensive style of, of playing a more defensive style of tennis, kind of like Nadal, who is using his top spin and his defense as a very strong weapon for him, and kind of like Djokovic as well. So a larger head size is going to be helpful in that because they're able to produce more power from deeper back in the court. And also, like I said, that larger head size is going to allow them to generate more spin because there's more area, more surface area on the strings to brush across. There's one more added benefit to these larger head size rackets that we don't get from the mid size rackets, and that is a larger sweet spot. With that larger head size and larger string bed, that also creates a larger sweet spot on the racket, so it's gonna be a little bit more forgiving if you're not perfectly on center with your shot. That's one of the main reasons why Federer switched from a 90 square inch racket to a 97 square inch racket is because he found that on his returns, especially on the backhand, he needed to have a little bit more margin for error on his backhand. So that larger sweet spot of the 97 square inch racket changed his return and his backhand completely because it was more forgiving. You might be asking yourself, what head size should you pick when you're buying a racket? And the answer is there's no one head size that's gonna be perfect for every player. Like I said before, different head sizes suit different types of styles of, of tennis. So if you're somebody who's more aggressive, who's taking that ball early uh, in the court and also is finishing a lot of points at the net, you might be looking at something like a mid-size racket, so a, something around a 95 square inch racket, so that you can have that optimal control since you're producing power and you're taking time away from your point and you're taking time away from your opponent just based on the style that you play. Whereas if you're a more defensive player, if you're a baseline player who uses a lot of topspin, then you're a player who's looking for a mid-size racket where it's gonna benefit your style of play. So really you have to analyze what is your style of play and how can the racket benefit the way that you play and amplify that to the next level. I hope this video helps you guys out in terms of picking a rack and how head size affects the way that you actually play on court. If you guys have any other questions or topics that you'd like me to cover in future videos, please make sure to subscribe to this channel, leave a comment down below, and I'll be uploading that video for you. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.